Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Market's getting to be a little bit older of any game. It's a 2007 game about setting up these markets and moving a bobby around. And you're going to be scoring points as customers come out, and you're going to try to draw them to where you want to be. Really just an abstract way to score points. These games were uber popular back then, and this is a lighter one. It's very easy to pick up and play. You're going to play a tile down to the most advantageous place on the board for you. You're going to draw a random customer, put them out, and perhaps move the Bobby around, which will take points away from you to get him where you don't want him to be. Or rather, away from where you, yeah, where, away from where you want him to be. So, that's pretty much it. The game can be taught probably in five to seven minutes. It's a very, very simple game. And it really comes down to how the game scores. And I'm not a humongous fan of how to maximize my points this abstractly. Now, listen, this is a game I did have some fun with. This is a, this is a pretty good game. Probably six and a half on the BGG scale. But I have a lot of games, and at some point, i got to make hard decisions about what I'm getting through. Things I like about this game, quick to play, easy to teach. Most people understand it, and what you're doing kind of works with the IP or the theme. I think it works fine. What I didn't like about it was it just kind of fell apart for me from a thematic purpose of that, like, it just became about scoring points. And in a crowded, crowded, crowded field of these games about scoring points, and lining things up and having the tiles in the right order and how can I do this and how can I move that doohickey. It's just crowded and it didn't last for me. Just didn't have enough oomph to bring me back to the game over and over and over again. And the thematic part of it didn't really work. I didn't feel like I was very interested in what I was doing. And it just became a glob of numbers almost. They, they, they put the colors on there. They put the theme on there the best they could. But that's a crowded field to be competing in. Portobello Market, you know, if you're looking for a light, abstract, kind of maximize your score type of game, but this tile here is worth A, could potentially be seven. They could. And what's interesting about all also is you control the scoring, you being the players, pronouns, pal, right? So the players will control what score. So you can't just load up one section because the other players will get wind of that and score it lower. So you want to be careful about that and you want to control the scoring. It's very neat. And I think I like how these things kind of go together. A re-release of this, I'd probably pick up and give it another try. But for now, it's going to be a purge. Here's Portobello Market from Playroom Games. You can see the little market here with the cop. So a lot of what's going on in the game is here on the box. Although, by looking at the box, you may not know that. I'm going to get a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few. We have a game board, which we'll take a look at. You're going to have this in different languages. And then you're going to have a lot of empty space in here. You're going to see these little slits. I kind of put the cards and things in here. But the box could have been smaller. We'll take everything out and we'll take a look and see what all these components are made out of. So here are the components of kind of what you're looking at. You're going to get a few of these little timer. These are cardboard and very nice. These are very, very thick. You're going to get these little markers in four different colors, which will make up the roads or the tracks, if you will. Very thick and very meaty. You're going to get a bunch of these people that we'll be putting out in different colors. These are really nice oversized meeples, much larger than like what you get in Carcassonne. You're going to get these little cheat sheets for each person of the four. These are cardboard and very thick. And then you're going to get the bobby here. This, this little uh, purplish black piece that will represent the sheriff there in the game. When you set all this aside, you're going to get a board that flips out. It's very colorful, very nice. You're going to have the scoring track that goes around it. And you're going to have all these little roads and whatnot that go through here. Very nice board. It's a little busy. You have a lot going on and you have these little symbols here. But very functional and a very good board. Here's the rule book. You're going to get the rules presented in three different languages. This is the English. You're going to have a color here of setup. of Kind of what it looks with pictures of where everything goes. Number of players and how many stalls that you'll be using. Object of the game, very good. Open it up. How to play is very, very simple. You've got plenty of pictures and examples. Very, very well how these things go. How many citizens, etc. And then the end of the game and how you score will be on the back. So you kind of use this as a cheat sheet at the end of the game. Very good rule book. Very simple game to play, but a very good rule book indeed. Start the game off based on number of players. You'll use certain colors of these so they have different numbers. You will get your little player aid here that you'll be utilizing. 
and the timers in your color, and you'll put one scoring cube on the scoring track that goes around the board. That's all it requires for setup. You also take all these people, except for the black one, except for the Baron, and you will throw those all back in the bag, and now you're ready to play. So for each round of the game, you're gonna have these three little action timers. And what you're gonna do on your turn is gonna decide if you wanna take two, three, or four actions. Say I'm gonna take the two, then I would flip this over showing that showing it's been utilized. So the next round, I can take three or four actions. Let's say I take the four, then the third round, I can only take three actions. Once they're all flipped over, you'll be able to flip them over, and you'll have access to two, three, or four actions once again. As one of your actions, you can place one of your market stalls. And you can place this any place adjacent to the bobby. When the game begins, the first player will randomly or just choose where they want to place the bobby on the board. You can place it on either end of the little path, but once you place on the end, the next person would have to place it next to it. You couldn't go on the other end, for example. So that would be one particular action to place out a market stall. A second action you have is you can draw one of these customers from the bag and you can put them at any of these locations that are kind of the intersection here and you can place those out. I'll explain what these do later, but just know one possible action is to draw one of these from the bag and put them out on the board. Now on your turn, it does not require an action, but you can move the bobby. Now, this is important if you want to put market stalls in a different location, you'll need to move him. You can move him as far as you want, but there will be a cost associated with moving the bobby. So if you wanted to cross here and go here, if I'm the red player and I have the most market stalls here, which I do, I do not have to pay anything. I can move over that. If I wanted to move it here, which this is empty, I would have to give up one victory point. Now if the bobby was back here and I wanted to cross over here and I'm the red player the ye and I wanted to cross this, I would have to give a victory point to the yellow player because he has the most stalls here in order to move the bobby to this location. Now when a lane is full and there's a customer on each side, then you will score the lane. And that's when this will kind of come in. You can see if it has a gray on each end, you just multiply how many points are by one. If it has a pink on each one by three, and so forth and so forth. So you just kind of look under here, and you look. So the red has one, two, and they're also printed here on the buildings next to it for ease of reference. So it'd have two, there's two pinks, so two times three is six. Yellow has three plus three is six, times three, so they would have 18 points for this. So when you're placing out the market stalls, you want to make sure you kind of get the ones that are the most valuable, and that will determine what customers you put on the end of the markets. So during the game, you're also going to have these neutral tokens. And what you're going to do at the beginning of the game is you're going to put the higher ones on top. So the first person that utilizes this will have the higher number, in this case a three. And if you went all the way to the bottom, it'd be one. And that's important because this will be set aside at the beginning of the game. Now, if you notice here on the four and the two, they have a little topper on top of it that you don't see on the three. So twice during the game, you can score an area that hasn't been scored yet. And then you would have the multiplier of times four or times two. And then you'll put this out on the board to signify it's been used. And then you will take the new one the new neutral token, and this will be your neutral token that you'll use for your actions. So if you give up to four and I took to three, I'm going to have one less action. But if I'd given up to two and I was able to get to three, I would actually have one more action for the remainder of the game. So it can be a net win or a net loss for you. So the, turn, the game is going to end when the last player places their market stall. Everybody will have an equal number of turns. Then you will score the game. At the end of the game, if the Baron is out and somebody has not scored it, it will score even if a lane is incomplete. After the Baron is scored, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Who should buy this game? This game would be strictly for anybody looking for a lighter game. They like that abstract scoring. Uh, we're going to do this just to maximize the points. It doesn't really make a lot of sense what's going on in the game. Other than the fact that I want to score a bunch of points. And I think that those kind of games, it's such a crowded field. I really feel that way. I feel like there's a lot of games like that. And there's a lot of good games like that. And it's just really like, 
Pick the theme you like the best. Which one strikes a conversation with you the best? And I think that's what this one's going to lack. For me, it doesn't speak to me. But if you like those lighter, abstract, score the most points, I'm going to do this. It doesn't really make sense thematically, but I want to score some points. And if you like that sort of thing, this is going to appeal for you. But for me, mediocre at best. And there's so many games, i got to get rid of some. Portobello market, it's going to be a, a purge.